Sebring started off the American Le Mans season with the usual 12-hour race, and whilst it was not an unfamiliar sight to see an Audi starting from pole, it was only by default. After both the Bentley prototypes had qualified on the front row, were moved to the back of the grid for a technical infringement on the rear diffuser. Sadly, Mike Hazemans in the Pagini Zonda was the first of many retirements in the race coming to a stop at the side of the track. Whilst James Wheeler went behind the wall with a steering rack problem. Timo Bernhard had to wait it out in the pits whilst the team changed the transmission after an oil cooler's filter split. The Bentleys have been busy moving up through the field, including David Brabham barging his way past Johnny Kay. DDA de Radigas in the Dyson Lola MG was happily leading the LMP675 class and pushing hard. In the GT class, Craig Stanton in the Peterson Porsche was about to lose the class lead, suffering with a broken splitter. Sasha Masson takes advantage and passes in the Alex Joe Porsche. After making his debut and having a pretty good race, Mika Salo came into the pits and changed drivers to Johnny Kane, but the car has a problem after Salo reported not having a clutch. The battle was hot in the GTS class between the Corvettes and the Ferraris, and the Bentleys were still on the hunt for the big class with a number eight car up to third. As night began to fall, the champion Audi was leading with Emanuele Pirro at the wheel ahead of Marco Werner in the Infineon Audi. The GTS class lead was about to change hands as the number four came to an abrupt halt with a gearbox problem. Another pit stop for the 38 car put Marco Werner in the lead and comfortably taking the win in the 900 class from the champion Audi and then the number eight Bentley. After a break of a few months, it's back on to round two now in the rescheduled calendar, and we arrive at the Road Atlanta Motorsport Center for the first of what will be two visits this season for the series, with the second visit for the final race of the year, the Petit Le Mans. Road Atlanta is one of those circuits that the entire paddock enjoys going to. Usually they're here for the finale of the season, the 10-hour race that rounds off the series, so everybody is looking forward to a shorter sprint to our 45 race here this time. been mixed weather in the practice sessions but when it came to qualifying the session was hit with torrential rain and then eventually scrapped and the session was used then for free practice it was decided that the grid would be set from the combined practice times and that means there's a surprise in store for the front row of the grid In the GT class, there was no surprise to see the two Alex Joe Porsches with the fastest times. The highly consistent pairing were again in good form, going out on the track when the conditions were not too bad in the first session and not knowing that their time would be the one that mattered. The crew of the number three Corvette CR5 were very pleased that their time got them the GTS pole, especially when they knew they'd got stiff opposition from the Pro Drive Ferraris this weekend. Ron Fellows was confident that they had a good setup and a good pace here. Johnny Herbert and JJ Later were having their first ever drive together as teammates in the champion Audi, and they qualified third overall and second on the LMP 900 class grid. 
Johnny is, of course, no stranger to the champion team, and JJ later arrives from the now-defunct Cadillac prototype team that finished at the end of last season. Qualified today was just, just a matter of timing, you know. I mean, we just put a new set of tyres and then there was a red flag, so we didn't really have time enough to get the tyres on heat and on temperature, so we just lost because of that. I mean, we have a good race car and we are, we are going to be strong tomorrow in a race. It's just the qualifying didn't work out you know, really well today. And that, maybe, is what the number one Audi might say after not getting pole in the Sebring-winning car, but still hitting the front row and the fastest in the 900 class. So Frank Bieler and Marco Werner are still in a strong position. The Dyson team have been getting faster and faster all the time in their 675. In Sebring, they qualified fourth overall, which was quite an achievement. And now they're on pole for the race here. If they'd been able to achieve that in a conventional qualifying session, they would have gone down in ALMS history as the first ever 675 to set pole. Everybody's worked incredibly hard. You know, all our suppliers, AI have done the engine, Lola's have come up with some good stuff on the car, and Goodyear have come up with some stunning tyres for us, so we're feeling pretty buoyant. The question mark is reliability. They suffered from a lack of that at Sebring, but a lot of work has been completed since then in testing and development, and the 16 car has to be taken very seriously now. The sun is out and the temperatures are climbing into the 90s. The starting ceremony begins with all the drivers bring their cars out to be displayed on the track. And the track temperature also climbing to well over 100 degrees. For some of the teams and drivers, this is the first outing since round one at Sebring. For others, the first race since Le Mans. And whilst for the very busy and almost never out from behind the wheel, Ron Fellows, it's just another chance to do what he enjoys and go racing. Oliver Gavin joins Kelly Collins in the number four Corvette this season and knows it's going to be hard work here. It's a little hot today, so uh, the closed cars are going to be very warm inside, so drinking plenty of fluid. Kelly's going to start, then I'll, I'll be jumping in after maybe about an hour, and uh, we'll see how things go. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough race. The Ferrari is very quick, but we may have them covered today. Olivia Barretta returns to the JML Paynals team after helping BMW Williams with testing of their Formula One car. The popular driver partners Max Pappis in an evolution of the LMP01. They have cancelled the qualifying because it was wet and now we have a beautiful sunny day so we will see but uh, concerning the car we have a good warm up this morning so I'm quite confident. We'll see. The race will tell us. In the brilliant sunshine of Atlanta, it was, as usual, all smiles on the ALMS start line, and it's sometimes hard to believe that the seemingly relaxed drivers are about to thrash themselves around at high speeds in fierce competition. Yeah, yeah, especially the first... The 675 in the past has always been quick, uh, but because of the reduction in our restrictor, it seems to have made a bigger difference. Uh, that, well, from what I've seen, it seems to have made a bigger difference. So for us, we have no chance of passing down the straight. So then it's all going to be down, I think, once the traffic comes into play, is then really when, when that starts, that's when the race will uh, come into play with us and the tyres. I think the Michelin tyres, we know, go on for two stints, probably three stints at the end of the day. Uh, and the good years is probably at the moment, we'll have to see how, you know, how good they they are. Marco Werner joins Frank Bieler in the number one Audi as his regular partner this year, a change from Emanuele Pirro. Marco has already had a good grounding with the team after winning at Sebring. We are in the first row, that's okay for us, and, uh, but I think we will see a very, very hard fight with a small car, very quick on the straights, and uh, I think I'm too far away for the breaking points to overtake him. For James Weaver and Butch Leitzinger and the rest of the Dyson team, even if it is not an official pole position, it is still a great day and a tremendous achievement to be number one on the grid ahead of some pretty refined machinery. But the challenge is to stay there now from the moment they roll over the line until the checkered flag, and it's never an easy feat.
almost ready to rumble then as you could say we're on the formation lap here at road atlanta 2.54 miles 12 turns on this grand prix course and this is how they all line up then as they moved away from the grid weaver and leitzinger 675 on the pole position here ahead of frank Bieler and of course marco Verde. quite a considerable achievement for them but as we've already said it's uh, a case now of keeping that and uh, staying ahead of the rest on board with the number 80 velux pro drive 550 marinello the ferraris expected to be tough here and this guy's going to be trying hard as well JJ Leto in his second drive for the champion Audi this season as we get the green flag and we're away and James Weaver leads away but up to second already goes JJ Leto who gets ahead of Marco Werner into the first turn we're on board now with JJ Leto this is a camera that's inside his helmet visor cam you could call it from second place now as they go up the hill there this circuit really does undulate it's quite tight and twisty but also flows up and down and you can see now we're coming down the hill imagine what that feels like with a full tank of petrol and high speed on the opening lap but it is still james weaver that leads from jj later with the 38 car marco verna coming alongside the champion there just having looked through but couldn't make it happen uh fourth place dda thieves in the doran lister delara andy wallace in fifth place in the Dyson Lola, uh, the AER MG engine 675, Olivia Beretta in 10th place, and that's Tommy Drizzy in the RNS Mark 3C Lincoln, one of the 900 LMP 900 competitors, had a spin. And um, that's at uh, turn nine, but looks as if he's okay and can complete uh, his return to the track. And he does. Here's a replay then, just comes round the turn, just a case of cold tyres, I think. Put the acceleration pedal down a little too hard. Weaver leads JJ Leto, who leads Marco Werner, the Infineon Yerst Audi in third place now. The team that won the opening round this year, which seems such a long time ago when we think back to Sebring. Second in class they are. That's the leader in class, but second overall in the race because JJ Leto is not having any joy getting past James Weaver. And what a great story it's been for the Dyson team, who since the back end of uh, last year have put so much work in. They arrived at Sebring with a very fast car that turned a lot of heads and uh, caused quite a few surprises. And then they struggled with reliability at Sebring, but now they're back. And hopefully the niggles are sorted out. There's the fourth place man and the fifth place man. And Didio Thies in the 27 car in fourth place. Andy Wallace in fifth, Olivia Beretta still holding sixth place in the JML Painos 01. The uh, evolution of last year's car. Look back to John Field in seventh place in the Intersport Lola, the EX57A RMG. And uh, that's a 675 car. And Gunnar Jeanette was behind him in eighth place in the number 11 car, another the JML Painos. But it is still a great showing for John Field, too who again has been one of these drivers and one of these teams that have just had so much bad luck with unreliability. Looking now at 13th overall, Emmanuel Nuspetti in the uh, olive green Ferrari 550 Marinello in the GTS class. Uh, he's fourth and we're on board with the fifth place man, number 18, Jerome Polican, also in a Ferrari 550, one of the Velux Pro Drive team cars that are entered in this race here. And he'll be handing over later to Danka Patrick who makes her debut in the series. One of the Corvettes we just saw flashing ahead there, and I presume that would be the number four car, and a whole gaggle of traffic now already for these guys to get through. Weaver's through safely, and JJ Leto just past the yellow Porsche now, and Werner right behind him, first, second, and third on the row. 675 leader and overall leader James Weaver comes down the hill now he's got another Porsche to get through and this is where the race really starts as we heard Johnny Herbert saying before in the traffic you've got to be careful and through goes JJ Leto to take James Weaver the traffic just caught Weaver out and taking the advantage was JJ Leto that was a beautiful smooth move through they go more traffic ahead of them there is no rest for these guys at all we're on board though with james weaver in that lola and 
picking his way through the traffic behind JJ Leto, just can't quite do it there. The difference in speed once the 900s are ahead of him just means he can't quite close up as we look at number three, the familiar Ron Fellows behind the wheel in the Corvette C5, and they have been putting a lot of work into that car. And uh, Ferrari right behind it. Of course, they're fighting the Ferraris hard this weekend as we join number 24 now. This is the Bernhard and Birdmeister Alex Joe Porsche, and we're expecting one of these to do fairly well here. Mix four chains for the... Oh, and there's a spin with the Ferrari that was ahead of the Corvette, and that is not a very good thing at all for Thomas Enger, who uh, was fighting in second place in the GTS class. Whole lot of tyre smoke going on, and uh, loses several positions there on board inside the number three Corvette, and there will be a smile. Well, in fact, there won't be now because his teammate's right behind him. And Ron Fellows has a very, very fast number four car right behind him with Kelly Collins in it. And Collins does look to be far more comfortable in that number four car. Well, no information on the setup. They usually run them fairly much the same, sometimes on different strategies. So it could be that he's got a lighter car but using or able to use a lot more of the track uh, Ron Fellows, though, a conservative driver. Now, are we going to see team tactics here? Because Collins certainly looks as if he wants to get past. If there was team tactics, if there was team orders, then he would be holding his guard just a little way behind that. But these guys are probably, I think, going to be allowed to race this out. And Ron Fellows making no signs of letting him through easily. So we've got a race between teammates here, wise teammates, it has to be stressed, they're not going to take each other off, but certainly at the moment, I think it's fair to say that Kelly Collins is being held up, but not this time because he goes through on the inside, Ron Fellows did make it very easy for him, not risking anything, and I think realising that uh, his teammate had the faster car and doing the wise and mature thing, but that's what you'd expect from somebody like Ron Fellows. So, change in the GTS lead now. Number four, Kelly Collins leads. Number three, Ron Fellows, as we go on board once again inside the Alex Job, number 24 Porsche, who's fighting it out with, uh, that's number 60, I think, uh, or number 61, one of the PK Porsche, uh, PK Sport Porsches, as we join now John Field, who's just passed number 27. So John Field up to fifth place now. He's made up uh, quite a few places already, and that's 675 Intersport Lola is looking pretty settled at the minute. Fingers crossed for them that they can have a good race here. They had a few problems at uh, Sebring. Well, there is the 27 car that has just been passed. That is the Ballista car. Doran, Ballista, Delara, MG Power car. The MG engine's just getting stronger and stronger all the time. And he too now passes one of the GTS cars. Look back at James Weaver inside the number 16 car, currently second in the race and first overall in the 675 class, but leading both the 900s and the race overall is JJ Leto, who made pretty quick work in getting to the front and has now continued to pull away and increase his advantage. And that's exactly what he needs. Build up a little bit of time before they head into the pits for uh, a change. Certainly be in for fuel tyres. They may change them, may decide to run a double stint. Into the pits, though, comes number 37. John Field is in. Fuel going into that car. He gets out. Duncan Dayton is standing ready to go. Uh, no tyres being changed on that car. And we got the number four car who was leading the... Uh, GTS class into the pits as well. Meanwhile, flashing lights to warn the drivers ahead of him that he's on his way. JJ Leto passes the number 88 Velox Ferrari of Thomas Enger that we saw spinning before. Down the hill he comes and he's into the pit lane as well. So let's see, is he going to stay in the car? Or will he be doing a double stint and Johnny Herbert taking over later? Well, arrives into his pit lane now, adheres to the 60-kilometre speed lane restriction. 
And the 88 Ferrari is in as well. And Thomas Enger is getting out. So he'll be changing over. Fuel going into the Audi. No tyres. Leto still in the car. Has a drink. Gets rid of the bottle. Out on the track. Marco Werner is now the race leader as Domenico Schiattarella comes out in the olive green 550 Ferrari. Butch Leitzinger in the 16 car takes over from James Weaver and Leto in the car uh, still as we know it. But the 16 car now ahead of the champion Audi on the road once more. The car's going really well. We don't have any problems. Just JJ's a bit quicker than us. Um, these are new tyres. It's the first time we've raced on them, so we just changed them as a precaution. Let's have a look at them. And I think we'll run to the end now without changing again. But the you know, tyre performance is extremely good. We just need a little bit more speed out of the car. Four and three circulating together again in the GTS class, although it's Oliver Gavin that's inside the number four car. Johnny O'Connell is behind him in the uh, number three call that C5R and uh, stalemate situation for them at the minute. It seems to be okay though. I was running hard but conserving my tires. You can see they're heavily blistered, but everybody else whooped their tires too. So we came out about halfway through the stint, got the lead, you know, held it. Number 12, Tommy Trissi, who we saw spinning earlier, has got JJ Leto behind him and Butch Leitzinger, who is now behind the champion Audi once more gets through this particular gaggle of traffic and has a clear track ahead of him for a moment Butch Leitzinger just got a wheel on the grass there and lost a little bit of momentum we're on board though inside the helmet of JJ Leto inside the number 38 car you can see how much his head moves around on the braking really working hard at that steering wheel to uh, tame that Audi R8 and then just slingshots himself down the hill and round this sweeping right hand turn along uh, mirroring the pit straight and Leitzinger just struggling to get past the traffic as well it's all clear at the moment for JJ Leto second drive for this champion Audi team and a brilliant pairing, really, him and Johnny Herbert. Going to be interesting how that pans out over the year. They have a running joke now between them that uh, JJ Leto is, in fact, the number one driver. Johnny Herbert is his support rider. And uh, that is due to the fact that, of course, Johnny drove with the Bentleys at uh, Sebring and got points in a Bentley, not in the champion Audi. And there is Marco. No, it's uh, Frank Beeler now. So they've been in and pitted as well. So Frank Beeler behind the wheel, so he should be two stenting this race, it looks like, in the Infineon Audi. And a whole lot of traffic for him to get through. That was the olive green Ferrari, and it was the 29 Ferrari, I think, there as well, the 360 Modena in the GT class, and a Corvette as well. But uh, uh, problems for that, uh, for that 360 Modena, and I think that might have been a puncture, or it could have been something else that was letting go. But uh, certainly the whole thing seemed to lock up. And I would say that Stefan Gregor has got a puncture. Can't see anything from that side of the car. We'll wait to see what happens. Frank Bieler, though, on a charge. And moving up past one of the 675s. And I think that uh, was definitely a puncture we saw there on that 360 Modena. And there, well, there is the 28 car into the pits now. So, yes, you can definitely see that tyre has uh, deflated uh, luckily has stayed on the rim because that can cause so much damage to the bodywork and the suspension but he's been very lucky to get that back virtually intact and a uh, little bit of abrasion on the side of the bodywork but into the pits and four mechanics now allowed to work on that car and they're taking the opportunity to change drivers and uh, also to refuel that oh and look at that that's a puncture for the number three car and that is chunking away and that's a much more dangerous situation. You can see the lashing the bodywork's getting from that. And from his position on the circuit, he's got a long, long way to go before he reaches the pits. And uh, that car could be very badly damaged. You can see the chunks just getting bigger and the tyres starting to split now. And that flailing rubber really, really is such an animal to the bodywork of the cars. Well, 
no problems for JJ Leto out in front. It will be a great day, though, if they can pull the win off here. Time will tell. JJ Leto leads. And Butch Leitzinger in the number 16 car is still working hard, trying to catch up on the back of that uh, car. And currently behind the Painos. That is the number 10 car. Olivia Bretta and Max Pappas are sharing that car. And the second car for the team is uh, the number 11 car. Get a shot now. Uh, looking down at the circuit, you can see nice wide runoff areas. You can just get a glimpse of the height that we're climbing there as we're in the pits now with the number 24, Alex Joe Porsche and Lucas Law in the uh, 23 car, Jörg Bergmeister has uh, changed over to Timo Bernhard. So Lucas Law leads currently on the circuits in the GT class, having already completed their pit stop. Uh, Sasha Masson in the pits having uh, a bit of a rest and a well-earned break from the heat. I overtook uh, Jörg right at the beginning. I pulled away, I was fine, and I hit a back marker, overtaking into seven, he didn't see me. And I dropped back to second again, catch up again and overtook Georg a second time. Danka Patrick now behind the wheel of the number 80 Ferrari 550 Marinello gets passed by JJ Leto. And you can see there the difference in the speed as uh, he just goes flying through. And that was Butch Leitzinger who went past her as well. Uh, she's in the GTS class in, we think, third place at the moment. But... 38, the champion Audi with JJ Leto behind the wheel, partnered this year by Johnny Herbert, leads here the second round of the American Le Mans at Road Atlanta. This is a rescheduled round, and everybody really happy to be coming here. This is a great, great circuit. Normally, we're here at the end of the season, as we've already mentioned, actually, for the 10-hour Petit Le Mans. So two visits to this circuit this year. Nobody will mind that whatsoever. And uh, the Champion Audi team will not mind winning here at all if they can. But sliding up behind the wheel of the number 16 Dyson car. Coming through past two of the GT cars at the minute. And circulating pretty consistently behind the uh, Audi R8. Changes to the regulations this year mean the inlet restrictors have uh, changed. The 675 cars not as restricted as they were. And now we're on board with the 03 car. This is a new car this year, and it's a Painos. Not the Painos that, of course, we're more familiar with, but this is uh, a new development uh, in the GT class. The Painos Esperante, the GT, the LM Elan engined car. Elan, who make the engines for the Painos LMP01 and also for the uh, Zero car, the olive green Ferrari is uh, an Elan uh, built and designed engine. It sounds very much like one of the LMP 01s and uh, looks a cross between, shall we say, a Corvette and a Porsche, but uh, good to see it here. I wasn't expecting to see it make its debut quite so early in the season, but the uh, gap, of course, with the changing in the calendar has uh, allowed them to uh, get a bit more work done on that. And uh, Rick Skelton behind the wheel of that at the moment on board and a view from the outside from the roof as one of the uh, prototypes just flies past and again we can see the difference in the speed of these cars and that is 77 John Burke one of the 675s that's retired in the uh, Pillbeam Nissan uh, the Nissan powered car reported to be electrical problems and no reported problems for JJ Leto and none either for Frank Bieler in the Infineon Audi. And JJ Leto double stinting. And so too is uh, Frank Bieler, but they've changed around the other way. With uh, Bieler now driving all the way to the end, where Leto will change over to Johnny Herbert at some point. Butch Leitzinger on board. The 675 leader currently. Second in the race, we have him. Getting caught by the traffic there. 
these cars just beautifully designed and meticulously maintained. And great to see this uh, car being such a challenge this year. So we only have two Audis. There's only one Audi from the US team. And of course the uh, customer Audi, the champion, have been running. And they were the first uh, team to ever run an R8 uh, LMP900 sports prototype. Still yet to win. They have something like 16 top five results now over the past two years in the championship. But they still desperately do want to win here. A lot of traffic for them to go through now. And, uh, well, there always is. There's just times where it's just slightly quieter on the track. And that's uh, John Field. Uh, it's a car that's uh, just ahead now of the champion Audi. John Field into the pits earlier, changed over to his teammate who's completing his stint. I usually would expect to see John Field getting back in that car later. See how smooth, quick, and beautifully handling that car is from that shot there. The Audi looking uh, refined. And perfect as always, just making easy pick-ins of the uh, one of the PK Sport GT cars there. 64 uh, kindly gets out of the way and lets him through, doesn't hold him up at all. So now he's completed that particular mover. Over that slight little hump now underneath the bridge, headlights on, just uh, hoping to glint in the headlights a little bit more. Here's a replay then. Oh, this is one of the Alex Joe Porsches. It's the 23 car coming together with uh, one of the uh, blue Porsches. And uh, well, as soon as that, we go straight into the pits again. JJ Leto's in the pits and he's out of the car as well. So he changes over now to Johnny Herbert, who gets in the car now. They're changing the tires. They're putting the fuel in as well. And it was Court Wagner that uh, Lucas Law had that uh, collision with before. That'll drop Lucas Law down a couple of positions. But this is the fight now. Uh, into the pits as well is Bieler. He's in the car. There's no new tyres going on, just the fuel. And the pressure really is on the champion team and also on the uh, Dyson team as well, who are in the pits. And they've got a problem with that car. They've changed the tyres and it won't restart. So John Field now leads the 675 class. And it's just, he was just tragic unfairness to this team who now can't get that car started. There's John Field, who is now third overall and leading the 675 class. And they finally got the car started after something like three minutes. So that puts him well down the order and a lot of work to do. And what a shame for the car that was leading the early part of this race, both on the track and the 675s. And this must seem like an eternity for Butch Leitinger to be slowly, slowly getting back onto the track again, as he does now. Several laps they've lost. Johnny Herbert inside that car has a little bit of space ahead of him, can get that car back up to temperature again. And they are perfectly happy with that car this weekend. Johnny Herbert. Just a little bit more aggressive than JJ Leto at times, but Johnny never wanted to miss an opportunity and now picks his way past the cars that they passed just a couple of laps ago. I got a decent first, first corner and uh, got by uh, Marco and then uh, fiddling with James a little bit. He was really fast on a straight line. I mean, we don't have with, with this engine configuration what we have with the restrictors. There's no way to overtake them. But he got caught up in the traffic a little bit and I just took a better advantage out of it and go by. And then I just I just went, you know, the car felt really good. We were really happy with the setups already yesterday with Tony and uh, it just the qualifying didn't work out yesterday, but you know, we are just getting it back today. So JJ Leto will be now watching the rest of the race, waiting for the final results as we pick up the number 80 car once again, the Velux Pro Drive car. And Jerome Polycad is back in that car now after taking over from uh, Danka Patrick. And uh, inside and on board we go. And good speed from that Ferrari because he's challenging one of the prototypes now 
And I think that's one of the 675s that he's just passed. Highly developed cars, of course, by the ProDrive concern, who uh, are involved quite considerably in all forms of motorsport now. Uh, Dave Richards, the head honcho, the head man at uh, ProDrive, mastermind of the Subaru World Rally campaign, and, of course, now the man behind the BAR Formula One team. That Ferrari sounding sweet, although they are struggling slightly, not seen as much from them maybe as uh, I was expecting. Uh, but still, they are ahead in the GTS class at the moment. And that is Ron Fellows in the number three car. He's going in. Uh, Johnny O'Connell has got out. And, uh, of course, well, they had to stop earlier because... Uh, of that puncture that caused so much damage for the back of that car. You know, what do you do? We had contact and, boy, you know, it's two and a half miles around with the flat tires a long way, and that's what, that's what took us out. So, uh, you know, right now we're fighting for third, and hopefully we'll, we'll pick it up and, you know, come away with some points. And that's Philip Cullen in the 52 Porsche, the 911 GT3 RS stroke rally car now as he goes through the gravel. Brad Nyberg's behind the wheel of the uh, 03 Painos Esperanti. They've been in the pits, had a long stop while they changed the fluid in the differential, but the car is still going. And very few problems so far for the uh, team. The races are much harder than I thought they were going to be, but I think the most frustrating thing for me was that I couldn't find any lap times on my dash. I had no idea how many laps I had done. So, and I heard one thing on the radio the whole time. So I didn't know if it went out. And then I saw my pit board and it said two. And they were supposed to count down five, four, three, two. So I really didn't know what was going on. Danica Patrick back in the pits then. Having changed over from the number 80 car, Lucas Law leads the GT class at the minute in the Alex Joe Porsche. And, oh, and there's the other one. Uh, two cars back from uh, Johnny Herbert, Timo Bernhard inside the 24 car in second place. No damage to the Porsche that uh, spun earlier. Timo Bernhard in the 24, Alex Joe Porsche, the flat cylinder Boxster engine car, water cooled. Just under 3.6 litre. Behind him is the Thomas Enger Pro Drive, the Velux Pro Drive 550 Ferrari Marinello, second in the GT class at the minute. Uh, quite interesting because uh, the GT class quicker than the GT car, and he's not having such an easy time getting past the Alex Joe Porsche at all. Right behind each other, and. Uh, Timo Bernhard not making it easy for uh, Thomas Enger. Uh, Ron Board with uh, Johnny O'Connell and Ron Fellows, their car that uh, Ron Fellows is back in now. Damage to the rear uh, left-hand side, I think it was, of this car with that uh, puncture earlier on, and that will affect the aerodynamics of the car. And that's Chris Dyson in the number 20, Dyson Lola. They had a great time at uh, Seabrink. And struggling, there's something wrong with that car now. He's into the pits. Well, they uh, have had a problem with a bit of a misfire, we're told. So hopefully they can get that sorted and get it back out again. Maybe they just have to reboot the electronics as we look down again over the circuit and looking at Johnny Herbert, who leads this race. Meanwhile, it's action now in the Alex Joe pit. Timo Bernhard is in. Fuel's gone in. The tyres are going on. And Sasha Masson leads this class now the 23 car Jörg Bergmeister though back behind the wheel and away he goes on board the 675 second place in the 675 class down to fifth overall now after the problems that they had in the pits but Butch Leitinger still trying hard there's still time to make up ground in this race and this is the man that's second overall currently with the way the pit stops have played out and leading the 675 class. That's uh, John Field back inside the Intersport Lola, the EX257, uh, the MG engine that's been prepared by uh, AER for them as well. Uh, that's the Olive Green Zero uh, Raffinelli Ferrari. 
And that's the car we mentioned before that's got the Elan designed and built engine behind it and virtually every part of that uh, green car has been rebuilt. There's just the roof and part of the chassis that remains original Ferrari. John Speed with a good bit of speed coming down over the top there behind the number four Corvette. And there's Johnny Herbert in the champion Audi looking very well indeed as he gets past one of the other prototype cars without any problems at all. Looking smooth and looking comfortable. Number three Corvette for Ron Fellows behind Johnny Herbert. And he'll be catching and passing him just about now. As he does, no problem. Ron Fellows gets out of the way. And the guys in the GT and the GTS class and the 675s, of course, are all used to uh, the faster cars coming up behind them. So always do try and get out of the way as quickly as possible. Uh, getting out of the gravel as quickly as possible, courtesy of the marshals, is uh, the 52 Porsche. Uh, that's at turn one. So, end of the race, I think it will be for the 52 car. Uh, disappointment for them. And uh, just gets into a spin into the corner. And uh, can't quite see whether there was any punctures involved in that, but I think that was just a little bit of overzealous driving. Forgive me if it's not. And uh, no problems like that for Johnny Herbert in the car. And driving the last stint, having taken over from JJ Later, Frank Bieler almost at the end of his stint as well time clicking away in this two hour 45 minute race and seemingly it's going to take a problem for the infinian audi to get ahead uh, take first place in this race they're second in class and currently second overall as well well, the ferraris ahead of him now it should make pretty easy work of that once he gets uh, Onto the right part of the track and close to him. Just the one car for the team this year. All their efforts behind the number one car who now successfully and quite easily passes the 550 Ferrari down along the other side of the pit wall. Once more, another lap completed up the hill and continues his rhythm, continues his momentum. Uh, just putting in consistent lap times, but not lapping as quick as the champion Audi. Johnny Herbert is just flying in that car. And uh, Frank Bieler knows that it's such a difficult task for him to try and close down Johnny Herbert. And he's just keeping it consistent. In the meantime, Johnny Herbert uh, just has one position on the accelerator at the minute. And that is as far open as possible. Former Formula One driver, of course, who uh, retired from Formula One after driving with uh, the Jaguar team and still sees himself being involved in racing for quite some time, has aspirations to maybe get involved in the, in the team side of things one day, which, of course, is what Stefan Johansson is doing this year, his uh, former teammate with champion uh, last year back on board inside the uh, number 80 Ferrari. Sounding very nice, sounding controlled. And uh, get a view, headlights on and making progress. A stricken 675 at the side of the track there on board with uh, number three, Ron Fellows. And he is currently in uh, Third place we make it in the GTS class. He's uh, managed to get that place back from the uh, number 80 car. So Ron Fellows up to third and on for a podium position. And that's not a bad achievement for them considering the amount of time that they lost earlier on the race. There he is now head on. Uh, so he did well to get past the uh, number 80 car. Frank Bieler once again in the Infineon Audi. And we make it somewhere in the region of 30 seconds, the lead for Johnny Herbert over this man, Frank Bieler, in the number one car, the championship winning car from last year. Frank Bieler and Emmanuel Ypiro, the victors at the end of the season last year. 
course, we're unfortunately without Dindo Capello and uh, Tom Christensen this year. Great, great man of sports car racing. And sadly, they're not uh, in the series this year. Let's hope that uh, we do see them again. Tom Christensen, of course, uh, drove at Sebring in the Bentley and, of course, at Le Mans along with Dindo. The white flag for the 38 car, the champion Audi on its way to its maiden American Le Mans win. The champion team, which started life in 1994 when it first entered the Porsche at uh, Sebring, it was, and there's a car stuck in the side of the uh, wall there, and I think that's number 10, num uh, number 12, sorry, Tommy Drizzy. Um, their 900 race has come to an abrupt end just before the end of this race. We're on the last lap, though, with Johnny Herbert, and this is going to be another mark in the champion team's history, and everybody is going to be delighted, and uh, they've worked so hard for this for so long, and finally going to be delivered, and it's going to be a second place for the number one Audi. Uh, Johnny Herbert not letting the place go for one moment passes the gts ferrari well, the dyson cars the 20 car uh, managed to get back out again after resetting the car so they're going to get a finish in this race hopefully as johnny herbert uh, just heads down now to the final turn the checkered flag out and way for him as he goes through and the champion team absolutely delighted and they're gonna be celebrated hard tonight it has to be said and hand up in acknowledgments of the victory herbert and later then winning the second round of the series ahead of frank Beeler and marco verna john field and duncan dayton were third overall and first in the 675 class Victory, of course, for the Alex Joe Porch team as well. They get another victory to their credit. And a very delighted Johnny Herbert and an understandably ecstatic champion team getting the win that they've been working for and waiting for for so long now. We've been up against the works Audi for a long time. It's a privateer year, which we're running the works cars, and it's it's been a long time coming because we've uh, put so much work into this. We've been close so many times, and finally we had you know we had no bad luck, and uh, you know we uh, we did a good race. JJ at the beginning did an absolute mega mega part of the race at the beginning, and that just made my job much much easier. So uh, I'm just so happy for for the whole crew. It was hard work for the Corvettes, but they again survived the strong challenge from the Ferraris, and it couldn't really have been any better result for Oliver Gavin in his second round here. Just really pleased with uh, got the win, sort of back over the Ferrari. Uh, it's nice to start this, this part of the season with a win, and I'd just like to thank all the boys on the four car. They did a brilliant job this weekend, really great. It is usually a case of an Alex Joe Porsche that wins, but this time it is a very delighted 24 crew who get another win to add to their credit. I'm very, very happy and I'm very proud of the whole team. I want to say thank you to Alex Joe Racing, McKenna and to my teammate Jörg. And it's been a very, very nice race and uh, it's our second win in the LMS and I'm very happy. Now we're looking for the championship, but I think it's a long way to go. Three drivers on equal points with Johnny Herbert, fourth in the 900 class. In the 675s, it's John Field and Duncan Dayton with a three-point advantage. The number four Corvette drivers are now tied in the GTS class with 39 points apiece, while Lucas Law and Sasha Masson have eight points over their teammates. History for the champion team and a warning to the others that they have the ability to take the championship next time the series heads to the Grand Prix of Sonoma in California. Here we go.